Hey, what's up, Ron here. Yesterday, I felt really inspired uh, to paint something directly. No pencil lines whatsoever. So we're going to paint this beautiful uh, coffee mug or coffee cup. I um, actually got this photo from the Wet Canvas Forums reference library. We will put a link below. Excellent photo. Be sure to check it out. There's also the name of the person who took the photo. Um, so I'm starting with that on a lip or the the round area of the cup. Um, you know, I started thinking to myself, what what is the purpose of lines? It's, it's To some extent, I feel like they really limit my painting experience because they narrow my perception to just the lines. And then I start thinking about the shapes in terms of the lines existing on paper. And I thought it would be a very interesting experiment to truly paint in one go without any pencil lines. Uh, so you'll get to witness it here. This is probably the one of the only times where I say truly one go. It actually is a one go. I don't don't do any layering here. Um, so this is the lips starting from light on the left side, light almost white, uh, and going over to the dark section. Now I am thinking in terms of shapes, because that is pretty much the only way that I figured I can paint this. So I am thinking one shape, two shapes, and so on. Um, but I am building them as I go along. Um, the, the byproduct of that is you know, the drawing could have been more accurate. You'll see in, in a second the drawing, right? The shapes could have been more accurate, but I think there is a certain magic to painting this way. And I am 100% sure I'm going to do it again real soon, actually, maybe later today. Uh, it was so fun. So we're going over the top of the uh, coffee. There's a bit of foam there. I'm assuming it's coffee. It looks like coffee. Uh, there's a bit of a yellowy feel to it, a bit of... um foaminess to the left side that I kept quite um, just paper white actually. Now the thing that really attracted me to paint this is I love when there is a surface and there is a shadow on it and that shadow really brings out the color because you'll notice the shadowy side of the coffee has this beautiful brown richness to it. Um, and I wanted to express that, you know, and, and look at how fun it is to place this dark shape here and see it touch the edge of the lighter part of the coffee um, uh, coffee's surface. Um, I find that to be a very fun, organic painting experience. Um, does take a bit more concentration to do, um, but I think like anything else, the thing you practice at is the thing you'll improve. Uh, I don't know if there's any... Uh, um, Japanese JRPG nerds here, video game nerds, that there are video games where the skill you acquire is based on what you do. So the more actions you do, let's say you fight more, or maybe you um, hide more and try to sneak up on enemies, the more things you do, the more your skills grow in that particular area. I think it works the same way for this. You know, the more you paint one certain way, the more you'll, you'll get accustomed to it. So it's just another skill. Um, so this pretty much wraps up the inside. You saw me adding a bit of wet and wet there. Now, nothing is perfect. You see the lip is very narrow and I made it like this, uh, a very common occurrence. Uh, uh, and I didn't even notice it at the time while painting because um, I could fix it at this stage very easily just by uh, painting the front part a little higher, right? Uh, but I go with the flow. Now on the left, you'll see there's a bit of a reflected light kind of red there coming from the left. I'm just placing that red. Now I'm well aware my brain is so attuned to values that I know it's darker than it appears. So I put quite a dark paint there and then I switch over uh, to a different color by adding a bit of carbazol violet, a bit of purple. Uh, I am going to slowly neutralize it with a bit of, uh, you see blue, French ultramarine. I'll probably add a bit of um, a bit of neutral tint too because neutral tint is typically just a gray. Uh, so if you want to neutralize a color and keep it dark at the same time, uh, it's a good mix to use. Um, and I'm just carrying it along, right? Now, as I get to the place where I estimate is that handle there, uh, I'm going to start keeping a blank area and really think about my move at that stage. One thing I wanna say about painting this way, I find it very satisfying. Um, it's almost like you would paint in oils a la prima, where you really commit to every brush mark and whatever it looks like, it looks like. What's so satisfying about it, similarly to pen and ink, is you know your shapes are final. And there is a great sense of achievement to that, to me. 
um, you know there's no no more layers. It's done. You place it there. It's perfect. And there is um, no doubt a sense of freshness to painting this way. Just because there's no, you know, there's there's just one layer. One, you you have one layer, one coat of paint, and underneath that, the paper is reflecting through. So it's a very fun and satisfying uh, way to paint. If anything, what I would do to enhance it next time is just be a little more careful with my shapes. Who knows? I may end up doing a hybrid version. There's no like it doesn't have to be uh, either full with, paper, with pencil or without pencil. You can decide. Maybe you put in a few landmarks for yourself to better uh, have, a, have a better sense of the proportions. And then, you know, I'm going to blend that edge a bit. Uh, and then uh, go with very minimal pencil lines. You could do anything in between, right? So um, uh, it's it's just all in the experimentation, what feels right. To me, it felt like really the, the thing I wanted to try. Uh, and I knew to listen to myself and I just went for it. I don't know why, again, that shadow crossing the, you know, the dark side of the coffee surface and the light side really influenced my, uh, my decision to paint this. Um, now, as you will see, there is this little white gap. I'm going to close it to the best of my abilities, but that's a thing you can fix later on with a blending brush, with a normal brush, you'll see. I'm not too worried about this part drying. You see now I have a dry wash. I'm putting wet paint next to it because it's small, it's narrow. I took advantage of this spot in particular to pause there and move work on the handle specifically because of that um, so it's what I like to call uh, stop points um, I talk about it in a few of my courses actually in the how to simplify course uh, even here the free course on YouTube uh, you can check that out stop points are a great way to know where you can rest um, and I think they become um, even more important to be just aware of when you work this way because you really need them. Um, so yeah, for example, I'm stopping at the bottom of the cup. I'm not starting to merge it with the shadows of the environment. Uh, the reason I can do that is because there's this dark sliver of a shape there uh, where the shadow is closest to the to the mug. And look at how slowly a nice impression is created. Because right now what's happening, the reason I think it starts to look quite satisfying is we're starting now to have that variety of colors and temperature. So you have essentially the warm on the coffee, it's a brown yellow, and then you have the cool uh, purple and these uh, complement each other really well. You know, yellow and purple are opposites on the color wheel. Uh, they work well together and then you have a bit of an added bonus with that red on the left and a bunch of grays. Um, and it all appears to be a nice little harmony uh, there. Now I'm gonna smoothen out the edge of that uh, glass just because I needed to feel more um, um, what's the word for it uh, symmetrical uh, just more symmetrical left to right I felt like I went a little too low on the right side but again that's a part of it look at how I'm opening it up I'm wetting this area to merge it with the shadow underneath uh, but that's part of painting this way again the satisfaction of knowing what you put on paper is the ultimate that's the end result um, the trade-off is you give up some control, but I would say in that giving up of control, there's a lot, first of freedom, of course there's a lot of freedom in giving up control. The thing you try to control will forever control you, because what you're trying to control is basically you base either a sense of security, safety, happiness on that control. The more that's why I'm starting to be fully against self-imposed rules because the more rules, principles, standards you hold, the more your happiness and all of these things I mentioned a second ago are conditioned on maintaining that control. Um, and so there is a lot of freedom in giving up that control, and there is a lot of. Um, I think skill access, right? So you know how to paint maybe, but you sometimes mess up because you can't, um, ca you cannot access your skill to its fullest potential sometimes. That's the thing that happens to athletes. They work on the same technique and the same skill. And then suddenly during competition, they can't perform it. Why is that? Their skill didn't run away. They still are able to do it. Um, it's just that they couldn't access it so this allows you to access it better because you're so much in it you're so much in the in the soup um and i had another point uh relating to that 
Uh, skill X. Yeah, a great sentence I heard just yesterday was, um, if you're wielding a sword with a shield, so you know you're safe, you can wield it in a much more artful and free manner to its full potential. Now, if you're wielding a sword, but you're completely unprotected, you'll never be able to control it to the level of complete art form and mastery. Um, so it was interesting to hear. Um, so whenever you don't hold these um, personal standards and principles, which is so against everything, because principles... You know, principles are, it's not a word that has a negative connotation, but I do believe there's a lot of negative, negati negativity, you know, just the lack of freedom there, you know. Um, so yeah, this, by the way, is one of my favorite parts too. I love, again, I love when either the shadow shows more of the color or the highlight, so, or the mid value in this case. So you have a clear brown coffee, and you saw me kind of measuring out where it continues behind the mug. Um, the shadow and the coffee shows more of the brown. It looks quite colorful. And then the the mid value part of the table shows more of the red kind of, I don't know, wooden burgundy kind of thing there, which I love. I love these nuanced reds too. So now I'm painting around that plate. Now this plate is going to become one of my favorite spots in this painting with the sole caveat of I didn't place it as accurately and I didn't leave enough gap for the light part of the desk. Um, so the way the plate looks to me is perfect. I just misplaced it. <coughs> um, but yeah, so I'm starting warm. See, this is a bit of a warm color. And then immediately I'm going to switch to a bit of a neutral cooler right underneath it. That's how I see it in the reference photo. Uh, and then we're going to have to quickly switch to a darker uh, value because there's a lot of darkness there and I want it to be painted together. And I want the shapes to touch and merge a bit together. Not with the mug. Of course, the mug is long dry. Uh, has, has been dry for a long time, but the the... the plate itself looks good. There is a bit of nuance in the value inside of the plate. And that's something I'll, I'll get very nicely in a second. So you see, I, I kind of uh, I extended the shadow and then I figured, oh, it shouldn't be as extended. So I'm going to lift it back with a bit of a tissue and, and hope that the gaps staying there will make some kind of sense. Um, this was kind of a failure to plan on my part. And I think the fact you paint directly with no pencil lines doesn't mean you don't you don't plan. Um, you can always do both. Uh, you can do both these things with five other things, right? You can do everything together. Um, so for the next time, my lesson will be to um, better plan even when I paint this approach. But on the other side, what I got here is a lot of immersion in the process, a lot of sensitivity to the subject matter, which I talk about a bit, um, where I really perceive it fully because I'm there's no lines to rely on. That's the thing. I think when I place lines, I almost delegate some of my skills to the lines and say, OK, this is where the shape ends. And then I end up not using them to their fullest. Um, and my goal with this little experiment was honestly just to follow my feeling and what I wanted to do. But now that I think about it in retrospect, it was to be in better communication with the reference photo and to better perceive its nuances. Uh, the nuances that can't always be put to words. Um, so look at this, for example, this plate is a great example. There's a smooth transition from dark to light as you go up the lip of the of the um, plate or whatever it is and then there is also a darkness inside it that leaves a sliver of a highlight and that's going to look really good and I think it's going to read uh, really well. I actually couldn't be happier with the end result here. Um, I have it right here next to me too so you'll be able to see it in the camera as well. The end. You get a teaser to the end result. Uh, absolutely love the way this one turned out. Um, and yeah, all that's pretty much left is just a few small touches and that gray on the top left area, top left half rather. Um, that will help us bring out the mug as a highlight and the red as a dark. The red on the left side of the mug, there's this red part we started with, then we transitioned into a violet. That's a great uh, area. So I'm going to be mixing um, a bit of a gray. This is too red. Um, so I'm introducing a bit of a more neutral tint, um, still quite warm, 
Uh, but let's see if that's going to work. Um, I would add a bit more blue to it now that I see it in retrospect. Now, my camera does play around with colors a bit. Um, it's a little cooler, actually, when you look at it here. I don't know if you can compare the two in this size, but this often happens. Um, quite often, my camera just drops the blues, and sometimes I'll edit it back to make sure they're visible. Sometimes I won't. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to add this background in, including the white lip. Uh, and what I'm going to do in a second is blend out some of that edge because it's a rounded, you know, the lip of the glass. Usually they're rounded, uh, and so you want to get a smoother transition there. Now, again, without a pencil, you really want to be in tune with what you're painting and, and get, get it, right? You want to make sure you get it. Uh, now, of course, if you compare it to the reference photo, there's a lot of mistakes. There are a lot of things that could have been done better. But I will say um, the main thing to me was just the shadow under the the mug that is, by the way, cast by a bottle should be warmer. Well, that's to the right. should be warmer. Uh, that's one big compositional error I made. Um, but other than I could, you know, glaze another layer, but I kind of wanted this one to feel fresh. So I stopped. Um, other than that, the biggest change I made here is just increasing the saturation uh, on everything. Um, and I love it. I prefer it that way. Um, it's a gray that has a slight touch of purple or violet in the photo, but I made it like really carbazole violet. So I, I actually love that a lot. I think that looks um, much better. Now I'm taking my um, Langnickel and what's his name? I never remember this. Um, Royal and Langnickel Zen brush size 6 blending in that lip uh, it's been a while since I used the blending brush um, I use it ever sometimes on smaller details like the um, cactus painting I did use it a bit uh, but then immediately with the dab it's really important to smoothen it out now I'll accidentally dab some of the background here in a second you'll see and I didn't even notice it I only noticed it when I looked at the finished result and I'm like oh where did that effect come from you'll see it now because the left side here should be almost paper white and I, I went a little too strong there on the left that's the first brush mark I made if you remember I started the painting there um, but you'll see now the dab uh, and I'm just I didn't notice that I lifted some of the background no one cares. I, I It's barely noticeable. Not to mention, I should probably cover that entire gray with another wash to make it darker. But I just kind of felt like, you know, this feels fresh. I don't want this to have any duplicate glazes or layers. Um, <coughs> and I, I just, you know, just place the paint wherever. Oh, I'm blending that edge I told you about. make it Making it, um, closing the gap, making it a little cooler of a transit, not cool in terms of temperature, just look cool looking transition. Uh, same for this, you know, this, these are small touches. Um, some, oops, I didn't add, I th I think the, I'll, I'll edit it, I see now that I made a mistake with the colors, color editing. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna sign this, this is the end result. I will, of course, uh, share with you in a few moments. Um, uh, the end result here. I decided to keep all the whole process. I didn't cut out almost anything because it's a one go. So I left the entire signature process. But yeah, you see a bit more blue, a bit more cool in some spots uh, that aren't noticeable due to the camera. I really like the way this one turned out. And I hope seeing this direct process uh, may inspire someone to give it a try. You know, just test it out for yourself and see if it makes sense to you. This is a very personal and also depending on the moment kind of a thing, right? Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the frustration-free watercolor course uh, for a similar approach to this or the watercolor realism course if you're more into the I want to get that realistic impression in my paintings. And I want to thank huge thanks to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to get credits at the end of the videos, be sure to check it out. Link in the description box below. There's also one exclusive process there. There may be more. Hint, hint. Uh, and I will talk to you again real soon. Till the next time, take care.